What's up guys? Before this video starts, I just want to say what's up. Welcome to the Conduit Guide. Yes, I know it is extremely long, but bear with me. There's going to be timestamps on your screen right now. I want you to click to the part that interests you the most. This guide is for new players. It's for pros alike. It's for everyone who wants to know everything about Conduit. I talk about everything in this video. I've been maining Conduit for about two months now since beta came out. And I, I've, I've been through it all, man. I, I talk about every single thing that I've learned in this video. And I have clips to back up everything that I'm saying. So click to whichever part fascinates you the most. If you watch through, it's going to be all clipped very efficiently. I tried to make it in the shortest amount of time possible. But it can't be short when, you when you're truly explaining everything. So yeah, man, I hope this is informative. Once again, I want to say you don't have to watch the whole thing. Just skip to whatever is the most interesting to you or whatever you want to learn. But with all that being said, yo, thanks for clicking the video and let's hop right into it. Yo, what's up, guys? I'm here to bring you a conduit video. Uh, the most informative I can in the shortest amount of time possible. Okay, so basically, if you want to see any specific part, there's going to be timestamps on your screen right now. You can just skip to a specific section. But I'm gonna go over everything. Okay, first of all, before we even begin, here's a disclaimer. All this stuff is subject to change. The game is ever changing. This is just how viable Conduit is right now and my guide for how to use it in the current patch. All right, let's get right into it, guys. I'm gonna go over all of the Conduit skills, how to use all of those skills effectively, um, along with rune swapping, which also leads us into how to use every single rune effectively with Conduit. And then my take on the most optimal runes and then after the runes we'll really start to talk about the builds you know my uh what items i suggest that you take and then on top of items i, I clump that together with the gauntlets so we'll talk about which gauntlets i recommend so yeah let's just get right into it man okay so first off for the skills potential energy it says lightning bolt hold to continue casting it's pretty self-explanatory as opposed to just one, two, three. One, two, three. You can hold it. No other class can do that. If I didn't have conduit, I couldn't hold it. It would just be one, two, three. So, that one's pretty good. It, it basically makes lightning's DPS more than fire. So, it's pretty strong if you hit all your lightning strikes. So that just gives you the DPS that you need. Okay, here's where it starts to get interesting. When you start to look at overload. On lightning strike, plus one rune charge, max one. All right, let's grab a skill point so we get that. So now we have it. Let's grab a rune real quick. Just take flood. I instantly have a charge because I just strike my sorcery. Now that's where it really starts to get interesting, because if I grab a scribe amulet, all of a sudden I have a 5 second cooldown on any rune. You following? Because basically, if every single time you cast a sorcery, you get a rune, your sorcery is a rune cooldown as well. So you have two rune cooldowns at all times, where everyone else has one. Okay, so with overload in mind comes the new concept of rune swapping. In the past, there was a class called Scholar, which gave you some rune cooldowns, but it was never anything that gave you an instant cool, instant charge. So, it was never really possible to rune swap effectively. But now, you can be mid-fight, using your shadow steps, fighting someone, and then decide, wait, hold up, you know what? I'm low right now. Let me just teleport on out of there. You know what I mean? Or you could be fighting with your shadow steps and then decide you need to res your homie. So you got 10 seconds of invis. Or you could just troll some people with wolf and invis and just peek around corners while you always have eyes on them. And then when they come to you, just run away invis. Like there's so much you can do. There's so much viability with just straight up rune swapping. But honestly, the best rune swap in my opinion is a combat rune into a, uh, a long range rune you could do a combat rune into a utility rune like wolf or invis 
or a travel rune into a utility rune. There's a lot of viability when it comes to rune swapping. And honestly, the biggest thing that you'll hear me repeat in this video is try stuff yourself because like there's a lot of viability in, in all of the runes. Just, just have fun with it. We'll talk more about rune swapping when we get into my rundown of how to use all the runes on Conduit and then the viability of all the runes. For now, let's just get back into the skills and talk about the third skill, Power Surge. This next one is every single time you cast your lightning strike, it's minus 100 mana cost. Any spell that you cast is basically free mana. I can cast stone. And that costed no mana. Obviously, if you cast lightning, you get so much use out of it. And then basically the last skill makes it so your lightning sorcery strikes three times. Now this is a ridiculous skill for final circle because you just have this gigantic AOE death circle that no one can walk in. It's kind of busted, not gonna lie. Alright dude, let's get into the rooms. This is obviously my favorite part, bro. There's nothing like just flying around your enemy, sending sorceries down, wreaking havoc, being a lightning god. <laughs> Alright, let's start from the top and then go down. So, obviously my favorite rune is Shadow Step because you can just get go around, you can dance around somebody just wreak havoc and they have no idea what's going on. Dash, everyone knows what dash does. It leaps you forward and you basically have a lot of these. So you get a lot of movement. Like I just got, you know what I mean? It's a very short amount of time. Obviously I, I recommend shadow step over it though, simply because you have a bunch of charges. You don't need a low cooldown rune. You might as well go just as far and be invis for two seconds. This is just in my opinion. Wolf? You know, it, it reveals where your targets are. I'm not gonna lie, with Conduit, it's kind of viable. It's kind of viable. Only as a swap though. Here's a clip of me using it pretty decently. Zen on Timmy. Second kill for Zen. Zen actually has a wolf's blood in the inventory. Ladies and gentlemen, Zen has a wolf's blood equip. Using it strategically. Spots out a player right there. He knows where the player is. He's gonna come around now. He, oh, he sees him. Gets savvy. Now he knows his opponent has no armor. He's gonna definitely pressure him right there. He switches over to the shadow step. So at this point, I knew that I could kill him, even if I just used that shadow step like that, because I, I I scoped the entire area. You know, I looked all around me, and I knew that there was a guy right there. So I beamed him, and I knew that he was no shield. So I just used my shadow step to get up close, and just stay invis in case anyone was spectating, so they they don't know that there's like multiple people here you know what i mean it's just really good to survey a situation especially in a tournament like that because you always want to be the one third party and if you have wolf and you're behind walls you can kind of stay invisible okay now we're on to the rare runes you have teleport chrono and fly teleport is insane you get very far very quickly This is a clip of me using teleport to get out of a situation. I decides against it. A player is on him right now. Fireball is coming out. It goes up for the high ground. Throws out the sorcery. Gives him a shadow step. He shots now. Can't connect back to his opponent. It's got to be careful now. The vanishing mist. The 100% outbreak right there is coming out. You see a third player running up right there. Zen Whoa. teleports away. Zen whips out the teleport. Quick conduit play from a from a veteran conduit player right there. Switches that one out. Very smart play for him to reposition behind the hill. Get his pots off before this one gets too chaotic. You see there's four people left and all three other than Zen are in front of him right now. He's got to be careful. Takes his quick chance at some loot but keeps on rolling. Exactly. I just wanted to get the reposition. I wanted to get the pot off. Let them fight each other a little bit more. Because honestly, there's no point in me being a conduit. And being that close to a fight, like, get full I don't have the W key potential that other classes have. My strongest suit is to stay in the back and take zaps. Oh. 
so yeah you can just get in and out of fights pretty effectively um just do damage and then like type back whenever people notice you that's the best way to use it you you want to teleport out before anyone's doing damage to you you know what i mean not in response to damage about to hit you if you know what i mean by that like you don't want to be seen basically when you're using teleport flight on conduit is pretty insane because like i said before you can have infinite flight if you have a scribe amulet with conduit you have infinite flight because flight second flight's duration is five seconds and the scribe cooldown is five seconds so that's infinite flight like watch You see, every time I fly, I get another sorcery back. Every time I strike my sorcery, I get a flood. I don't have to stop. Now, Chrono Conduit is in an interesting spot right now. Just simply because it got a hard nerf. Like, before Chrono used to be... You used to, like, cast it in the air, right? And then you would, like, W key. And then they would hit you, and then you'd spawn back up here, and then you can activate it in the air again. But now you have to hit the ground. And basically, let's just say I'm a stone user and I'm fighting you. So you're respawning in the air. I know that you're going to hit the ground. Either here or like over there. But I'm going to get a free hit. So it's kind of like, it's kind of trash. But at the same, like, that's only for solos. In like a solo 1v1 situation, a good player can abuse someone using Chrono very easily. Like a movement rune is much more viable in a 1v1 situation. However, it, I think that a good squad could still abuse Conduit Chrono, or use it, because I, I don't think it's busted. I, I would like to see it effectively pulled off before I make like a conclusive decision. Just for me, like it hasn't been good ever since that specific nerf. Yeah, that's it for those runes, the rare runes. Let's get on to the uncommon ones. Obviously, Spring Step is pretty cool with a bunch of charges, especially if you get the Levitation Boots because you can get a lot of altitude. Just wait a second. So you go one, get all that altitude. Another one, get more. Another one. And obviously we're pretty high just off of spring stuff, you know? It's pretty dope. But uh, at the same time, I, I never recommend anyone use Spring Step over Dash or Shadow Step simply because you don't get the forward momentum. You can't dodge a Lightning Sorcery with Spring Step. Not, um, not reliably. So, it's, it's cool. It's definitely cool. It's just not like it. It's just not better in terms of like quick movement runes, yeah. Invis is kind of nasty on Conduit, not gonna lie. Simply because you can be mid-fight, and then your homie can die, and then you swap to Invis real quick. Like, you all, and you always have it charged, that's the thing, people don't get that. Like, if your sorcery's charged, you have any rune charged at your disposal. So you're fighting this guy, he kills your homie, he downs your homie. So you shadow step back here, swap to Invis real quick, do the 180. And then you're rezzing while he's potting, you know what I mean? So, Invis is kind of nasty. It's a good swap rune if you don't have a, uh, like, a teleport or anything yet. And then, uh, here's Featherfall, yo. There's this, uh, this guy named Shy Guy. He actually started using Featherfall. I never would have thought that it was good, but he's right at the same time. Like, this angle for lightning is nasty. This is Shy Guy Sensei using Featherfall to beat me. Up to check his armor, knows that Zen is full HP. Zen dodges the incoming lightning strike, but catches the second wave of it. In my opinion, he could have tried to look for a toxic slap there to make the difference, but it doesn't matter. He misses the first side anyway. Zen decides to push with the fire gauntlet. Big trouble here for Shy Guy Sensei as they trade damages. Zen, I think, coming out on top with maybe 85 HP total, but Shy Guy Sensei gets vertical, misses the front slap, but it's gonna go down to one HP. So obviously, that that angle is insane especially in planes like this where it's just open field he has the high ground he has the preferable aim like the the preferable angle to aim the lightning it's just insane and he could just he had scribe as well so he could just keep sending down the lightning strikes it was just honestly he just had he just had the the out position honestly because of featherfall so featherfall can be used viably with conduit 
Okay, this right here is just a prime nope, example I'm of doomed. excellent feather fall usage. He says I'm doomed, but he just starts getting the damage off. You see this excellent angle that he has. He gets sniped, but it doesn't quite matter because he gets behind the wall, finishes off Moinker, and then the stone comes, so he's right back up. And then he's just on this hollow with his lightning. If you just if you if you hit all of your lightning shots, then this angle is ridiculous, especially with the scribe amulet. It's just not much an enemy can do unless there's two on you. So obviously one thing that this is susceptible to is two snipes, which I'll, I'll show you his response to that, because I did ask him. That's clearly a weakness of this. But yeah, he just gets an easy squad wipe. He just hits all of his shots and cleans it up. Oh my god. GG. Oh. Yo, shout out Shy Guy Sensei. Yo, follow him on Twitch. He sent the clip in. So yeah, I asked him, I said, what do you do when people snipe you? And then he says, try to heal before they get to me. If I can't, I said, what, are you out DPS? He's like, nah, try to hover right above them. So I understand that because when you're aiming up in this game, like it's very hard to see just just because of the state that the, uh, the bow sight is. I'll show you a clip right here. So yeah, it's always going to be susceptible to some third-party snipes. But at the same time, if he just goes right above them, he's fine. And he can, it's actually a perfect angle to aim his lighting, so. Okay, so yeah, that was kind of long, but I just had to thoroughly describe every single rune and like the, the maximum potential, in my opinion, of them for Conduit. So with all that in mind, I'm going to tell you every single rune is extremely viable, as corny as that is. I'm not gonna pick any single rune because you have your combat runes, you have your you have your kite runes, you have your clutch res runes. Like honestly, if you can find any combo that works for you, based on your RNG, what you find the game, or what you need, it's like all of them are extremely viable. Honestly, you you S tier shadow step, A tier dash, uh. A minus tier spring step because you you need one of those three that's why spring step is so high it's like if there were like five others that are similar like quick dodges spring step would probably be like B because you can't get out of uh, can't get out of the lightning sorcery but it's not bad you definitely need at least spring step chrono I say I say B minus C tier it's like you're only really gonna get this off on like bad players who don't know how to kill it it's not really that fantastic uh, teleport S tier, teleport S tier, of course, it's instant travel, you're getting in and out of situations, you're getting across the map instantaneously, if you have fluency bell, you have five teleports, I, I, I don't know what else to say, bro, you can teleport mid-combat, it's nasty, S tier, flight, A tier, it's pretty good, but you can be sniped mid-flight, mid you're getting farther, per flight than you are per teleport but teleport is more guaranteed there's a glitch in the game where if you just tap teleport without like holding it it uh like sends you back in time in the wrong direction so basically to avoid that you're gonna want to just hold it for just half a second longer than every other rune as opposed to like the quick taps that uh like dash and shadow step call for for some reason it's working right now which is fantastic i mean that means they might have patched it a little bit but uh yeah just just in case that comes up I, I recommend that you hold your teleport half a second longer than every other room and honestly it takes time to aim it anyways like if you do one of these like near a glitchy area it can kind of get glitchy so you want to you want to take time to aim it anyways I would say B Wolf's Blood is honestly B tier. It's pretty, it's pretty excellent in certain situations, but you're also not keeping your combat rune charge. Like Wolf's Blood does, it does wonders, but at the same time, if you have battle awareness, it's usually good to just keep your combat rune charged. I would say Invis is probably a solid A minus tier, just because it's like. It's, it's very clutch, but it's also very situational. So it's not like a universal rune, but in its situation, it's S tier, you know what I mean? But only because it's situational, I don't, I, I just give it A minus.
It's excellent. It's excellent. You could uh actually with invis, it could you could you could argue that it's a plus if you're a frost main. That's another build that you could do with uh, with conduit. You can just carry a frost and then have ten seconds to charge your snipes. That's a, that's an interesting build that you can try. It's good with wolf too. Wolf and invis swap. Featherfall. Honestly, this entire time I've been saying C tier, B tier, max. But now, I'm thinking Featherfall might be A- tier, simply because of the way that Shy Guy Sensei has been using it. Like, it's, I, I've, never, I've never thought of to use it in that manner. And that angle is excellent with Conduit. You're just getting above someone, and, uh, you know, like, you're just trusting that you can out DPS them. Like, it's so much damage. This is the perfect angle as well. So, it's pretty nasty, honestly. Honestly, I say A tier, solid A tier. So yeah, that's kind of the viability of all the runes in my opinion. Now, let's get into the viability of the items. Start with the amulets. Uh, obviously, you don't want either of those. You want the Berserker amulet, in my opinion, over cast speed, over this, and over Slayer. Cause literally, it's minus 35 sorcery cooldown, but if you recall, your sorcery is also your rune cooldown. So it's minus 35 sorcery and minus 35 rune. So it's even more nasty in my opinion than behemoth, though I know a lot of people would disagree. So I'm not gonna tell you not to take behemoth over it. What I'm gonna tell you is try both of them and, and see how you feel. Because cast speed also affects your lightning sorcery, how fast you, sh how fast you cast it. So it's, re it's really up to you when it comes to behemoth over berserker but if it's scribe over behemoth you're obviously gonna take scribe because scribe amulet gives you a five second cooldown on any rune <clears throat> since it's a five second cooldown for your sorcery and berserker gives you an 11 second cooldown on any rune so that's how you should think of these uh amulets but yeah slayer is also if you don't if you can't find berserker or some people take slayer over berserker i'm not even gonna tell you to do that see what you prefer some people prefer damage i prefer having my rooms 35 percent faster you know what i mean or in within five seconds but um yeah dude see how you feel because like at the same time it's really nice to hit those lightning strikes when you hear you know that that audio indication that you're hitting those you know it feels really good and also, it's just extra damage. It's really nice. It makes your damage fall off a little better, you know? It's pretty cool. But yeah, dude. So those are the amulets. Uh, cast speed, yeah. I already talked about that with the sorcery and then drain. It doesn't really affect conduit that much. But I guess you could make an argument that conduit can abuse it the most, low-key. Because you're, you're like guaranteed hits from across the map. So you can just drain armor and just stay in the back. So I guess if you had Mender Amulet, it'd be kind of nice. Uh, Mender Amulet, by the way, is if you do 100 damage, you get 20 back because it's drained 20% of armor. So let's go on to boots. Uh, obviously, you want the Scribe boots, in my opinion, just because you get the speed. The stun is nice. You would think, some people would think, oh, you're, you're conduit. You want to not be stunned. But... I, 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 I argue just to get good. <laughs> no, no, no diss. Just like don't stun yourself. You know what I mean? Um, behemoth boots. If you don't like the, if you stun yourself often, if you're, if you're trying conduit, if you're just learning it, then yeah, I, I do recommend behemoth boots. I do recommend the stun boots because you're just learning it. You might sorcery yourself a lot for a while while you're like flying through the air with all your runes. It's, it's like, it's a lot to get used to, honestly. But, um, right now I'm kind of maining scribe, but at the same time, now that there's starting to be other conduits that are playing, Behemoth might become meta, low-key. But at the end of the day, let's let's move on to the Wanderer. Wanderer are honestly the most busted item in the game. If you get these Wanderer boots, I'm always going to call them phasing. I'm just saying Wanderer because it's in my face. <laughs> but um, yeah, you're just in this half the game. These boots are busted. There's nothing else to say. These are the best in the game. Uh, Slayer are nice. Conduit really likes levitating like to get that high ground on people um so honestly you can't go wrong with the slayer boots i take them over behemoth just right now but like i said meta is shifting so maybe that'll change but yeah you, you need the wanderer boots you're in this half the game let's move on to belts you obviously want the charge belt to uh 
make yourself OP, give yourself a bunch of charges. Slayer is nice until you find the charge belt. Mender is cool until you find a charge belt. Uh, Cause you can you can duck in you can duck out of fights with your shadow step and you know get pots off. It's kind of cool. Uh, scribe belt is pretty nasty, honestly, if you can get it down. But in my opinion, I'd rather just not take damage. Because, like, if you get damaged while you're, you're, like, using Shadow Step, it breaks your invis. So, I'd rather just, like, use Shadow Step. But if you're, like, maining dash, maybe give it the, the Charge Belt to your homie. Because you already have a Charge Belt just because you pick Conduit, you know? So, maybe you just take Scribe so you can uh, get some, some dash and just W keep people with Tox. It really depends on your build. But most of the time, you're going to want the Charge Belt. Uh, obviously, Fluency over Behemoth and Behemoth over all the rest of these. There's nothing else really much to say about that. It's just facts right now. Can't wait till they uh, buff Behemoth belt. Should have more armor or something. But yeah, dude, those are the items. So, so there's a few things to consider when choosing a gauntlet. The first question is, are you rune swapping? If the answer is yes, then you don't want a gauntlet swap because you always want to have at least three potions, man. Like that is just so vital in my opinion. You could risk it with two, I guess. And we'll, we'll, we'll go into a few things. We'll go into a few things. So let's start with Frost. In my opinion, there's not much reason to use Frost with Conduit unless you're going to use some type of Invis. Are you going to use Invisibility Rune or Shadow Step? If the answer is yes, then I guess I could see a reason in using Frost because if you use Lightning, you're going to break the Invis, where Frost, you have time to charge it. So if you hit your Frost Shots, you have to at least be abusing some type of invis to justify it. Because otherwise, instead of doing all this charging, you could just be electrocuting someone, you know? The only reason to charge is if you're invis, in my opinion, with conduit. With conduit, that's the only reason. So, I don't, for that reason, I don't use frost. I think that frost is definitely an A tier gauntlet, simply because if you hit your shots, and you're using some type of invis, it's it's insane. You're gonna get the 72 damage, they're gonna be running away, then you push them with your fire gauntlet, and you have lightning for uh, for cleanup, or you just push with lightning, whatever. But yeah, dude. So yeah, I say that frost is A. I say that fire is S tier, because lightning is all about that mid range, and fire is an excellent uh, backup, like you're just running up on someone, and then once you get within that certain range, you know that that fire is going to hit. It's just excellent. Fire and lightning work excellently together. Also because uh, of the sorcery, if you're getting sniped by a frost user, you just slap your firewall in front of you and then you start zapping them. Because the lightning goes through the firewall. It's just excellent. And fire, right now, fire's uptime is always on. So like the second this disappears, I can just put another one. It's kind of insane. I think that needs a nerf. But yeah, fire is S tier. It's just extreme consistent damage at the range that you want to be at. And it's also a good close range gauntlet. I mean, I can get very close and, you know what I mean? Just reliably do 40 damage in conjunction with my lightning. You, you, you stun them into a few fireballs. Like, that was like 120 damage. You know what I mean? It's pretty nice. So yeah, S tier gauntlet, easily. I would say that stone is like A minus. It's not that bad, but you're definitely gonna need to uh, put your lightning on the right and then have like a fire swap because you need to be able to get that consistent air damage. I mean, you could say your lightning is a consistent air damage, I guess, but in my opinion, you're always gonna want a fire or a tox just so that you have consistent like close range DPS, you know what I mean? So, if you're taking stone, you're you're gonna need to go and swap, in my opinion. But you could refute that, you could say no. Because let's, let's just talk about what stone can do by itself. Not much, hold up, let me get up here on his, on his high ground. <laughs> well, you have just complete dominance over the field in terms of like, raw damage like you have like the best uh air control and you have the best ground control so that's worth mentioning you know so yeah i guess you you have the boulders which are also pretty defensive so you can run up on a sniper and then start getting your uh your lighting dps in 
it's not bad. Just honestly, honestly, thinking about it now, it's definitely a, uh, a B minus here. <laughs> it's just like, it's not that consistent. You just have to get on their high ground and like, you don't want to limit yourself gauntlet wise when you're removing your limits runic wise, you know? Like, the fact that you can get all this high ground and all this maneuverability, you don't want to be limited by the fact that you have to be on the ground, you know? So I'd say it's like B minus for conduit. Like, it's definitely not bad, but if you're not good at like fire or toxic, then I do recommend it. Like, this is good for new players for sure that are using conduit. Cause it's gonna do consistent damage to a lot of people. So that's why it's B minus and not F. Like, obviously you can do damage, but I don't recommend it. I recommend getting good at fire or toxic with conduit. So you can kind of see where I'm, before I even say it, you can see where I'm at with wind gauntlet. I wouldn't say wind is that spectacular. Uh, the only thing really worth mentioning with wind is, yeah, you're gonna break the fireballs, but dude, you're just not, you're not doing any damage with the wind where you could just be doing tox damage. I say as I miss all my shots. You know what I mean? Like you have all this rune and you're just gonna waste it with uh, uh, some random flicks. <laughs> so you're just much better off not using it. But what's worth mentioning is the, uh, I don't wanna move this target. I'll move this one over here. There's a glitch where if you put a tornado, he'll just like move infinitely. It's been here since like the game first started. It's cool though. Um, if you put a tornado here, you could, uh, more guarantee the stun. It's definitely worth mentioning, I guess. But, uh, the lightning tornado doesn't even really have much of an effect, honestly. Until, it doesn't stun them until they get to the center of it. Here, I'll show you. You have to get to the exact center, but you can just avoid it easily by s -king. Like, you don't get sucked into it. You know what I mean? I'm like, this is me dancing around, you know? It doesn't really do that much. So I think it needs a buff. I think it should be an AoE stun, similar to the cloud. Like, this AoE is gigantic. You know what I mean? I would say that Toxic is definitely S tier. Because if you're nasty with Toxic, if you hit your Toxic shots, you're gonna do amazing, consistent, close range damage. Uh, paired with the stun, it's just ridiculous. Especially considering the, uh, the nice AoE stun that you get with that. Like, this AoE stun is so big, it's ridiculous. You're definitely guaranteed a stun. Like, right now, you can't shoot through your lightning. But that's also maybe a good thing. It's a nice, uh, it's definitely a nice shield. Uh, it's anti-frost and it's anti-lightning. As well as fire, if you think about it. Just because it, it has to be DF first. It also breaks line of sight, which is kind of nasty with paired with uh, invis or paired with shadow step. So this could be a really good uh, gauntlet for you if you're really going for like a, uh, a frost and invis build that I'll get into. Actually, yeah, I'll get into that right now. Let's just go. Let's just use that to segue right into the, uh, the build. Okay, so how I'll organize the builds is the rune swapping builds, the gauntlet swapping builds, and then I'll do one that swaps runes and gauntlets, but I don't recommend that. You always want three potions, so you only want to swap one thing, in my opinion. But I'll do one, because I know someone's going to be like, oh, this is so cool, you know? <laughs> yeah, I got you. All right, so this is one build I would highly recommend. I mean, this is just insane. You have the shadow step, you have the extreme long range superiority. If you hit your frost shots, it's nasty. It's just, in my opinion, it's tough to abuse with only ten, with only two seconds of invis. But it is pretty nasty. Like, you just get, you just like go invis and you juke around them, and hit them with stuns, and it's pretty cool. So it's gonna be the uh, the lightning, tox, and frost. Just to really abuse that invis and uh, that close range superiority. You could also just easily swap this build with a, uh, a fire gauntlet if you prefer that. It's just honestly that that combo of uh, invis frost charge and then uh, all the charges that you get from having conduit. And also just the cleanup potential of lightning. Like no one's running away from that. It's kind of monstrous. So yeah, just like standard shadow step frost invis build. 
All right, this next build is gonna be my build. I just use lightning and fire just to really uh, abuse the rune swap mechanic. It's my favorite mechanic in the game, so you're always gonna catch me just having my three potions and like two runes. Sometimes I like to have three runes depending on a given situation. Like sometimes I risk it and I'll have an invis. Just in case it's like early game and like we might die like, or maybe it's a wolf or something. But yeah, typically I just have this build that you're seeing right here. Just lightning, fire, and uh, a teleport shadow stuff. It's just excellent. It's just like overall just very consistent damage on all fronts. Like close range, long range. Like I can do that from very far away. You know, it's very consistent damage. And like if someone runs up on you and you need to kite, you're out, you know? So yeah, that's my favorite build. Just lightning and fire and then rune swap. Uh, I guess you could easily substitute this teleport for a flight or you could substitute it for invis because if you get around a corner or if you have a, a toxic cloud and you break line of sight, then you could do one of those because your enemy was behind the cloud and they didn't see you. So you're gone, you know, like just depending on your loot, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, Inside of the fluency bell, you'll probably have like a, a charge bell, or maybe you're unlucky and you only have uh, a slayer. You still have two charge, or you still have a fluency bell. Like if you get a slayer belt, you get a fluency because you have two charges, and then you have the third one being your sorcery, and then you have minus twenty cooldown. So yeah, it's it's always interchangeable. That's why I just like the consistency of this of this one. One thing, another build that you could go for is just like extreme final circle, like just cheese sorcery. You could, uh, you could just grab a flight rune and then just fly up with a, uh, with a scribe amulet and then just chain sorceries on people. Like, hold on, wait for this to charge, I'll show you in a second. So yeah, just pretend the circle is extremely small and I'm just fighting this guy, so. I just fly up, send down a sorcery. Then I fly up again. <laughs> Send out another sorcery. And you can see how this uh, could get you some wins. It's very good gameplay right here. But a good player, like, you, you can do this, but at the same time, a good player can abuse you if you try to do this to them. So it's not like OP or anything, but like for new players that are trying to have fun with Conduit, this is something that you can do. And you can kill some good players if you third party them and you and you just get your timing right. You can like this is definitely viable. And it's very uh it's like it's low ceiling as well. It's like you're you can only get so good with it, but it's also very easy to get good at doing what I just did. It's like the very first thing that I recommend for like conduit players, honestly. It's it's better with tox, but you could also do it like if you if you're good at hitting your fire shots, then uh, the firewall is not that bad for like final circle cheese. It's not fantastic, but the tox is probably the best. Um, you could do something similar with featherfall while also retaining your uh, while also retaining the ability to like get consistent uh, lighting damage. That's kind of nice with featherfall. And fire but in my opinion they're still very susceptible to damage from this point so if you were going for like the cheese final circle build then I wouldn't recommend it but yeah just straight up feather fall and fire is like pretty consistent damage this is another build I guess <laughs> like honestly it's all about experimentation like I just made like a build out of nothing you know what I mean it's just just grab stuff and just jump in practice mode or well just get you get the RNG of the games like over time you just start to make new builds but let me just go over real quick the uh, the chrono conduit build I guess in my opinion to optimize chrono you could uh, use stone to get the ridiculous amount of damage 
use Toxic to get the ridiculous amount of damage. Or you could uh, use Fire for the consistent damage. Basically, all you want to do is just activate it in a location where you'll be able to reset nicely. Like, some high ground. And then you W key your opponent. And then you get reset. Because he did damage to you, but it doesn't matter. You have to hit the ground first. W key him. Reset. Honestly, I don't recommend this build to anyone because a good player, like, first of all, you won't be invis half the time. Also, uh, a good player will just see where you're respawning and then just use their dash to get away when you're W king them. And then they'll just start zapping you where you're returning. Like, Chrono is very abusable at this state. I just, I think it needs a complete rework or just, I don't know. It's, it's never been that fantastic. I don't recommend this build to anyone. Like, it, it used to be decent because you could respawn in the air, but they nerfed it. So, it's like, you have to hit the ground nowadays, which means you're just susceptible to stone damage. You're susceptible to DF NATO, any NATO, lightning sorcery, toxic cloud, uh, toxic puddles, just uh, a slow effect from Frostborn. Like, just any type of aoe that's in this game uh pyromancers just everything so i, I really don't recommend chrono you're much better off with a, a movement rune but it's something that you can do and you will get wins with it you'll get kills with it but it's it's like very low ceiling at the same time like a, a half decent player once they notice the pattern can kill it very easily so i've told you this entire time how you should use conduit now this is how you shouldn't this this is a clip from the beginning of 30 i'm pretty sure yeah 30.1 few like maybe a month or two ago or maybe it was like yeah i think it was like a month ago at least maybe two months whatever but basically i was just shadow stepping around very passively trying to kill my enemy with sorceries really the way that you should be using conduit is using your your runic prowess to w key people down and just you know, you have the outmaneuver. You might as well just go for your fireballs, go for your lightning shots. So, this is just a prime example of, like, just taking too much time and, like, waiting for sorceries. So, he hits me once, he hits me twice, and he hits me a third time. Like, so quickly. Because that's how quickly you can lash out fireballs. That's all that he needed to do, honestly. Where I was just shadow stepping in the air predictably. He just watches me. I get hit once. I shadow step this way, he follows me, nice fireball, goes into the wind jump into another fireball, and it's already over. Like, extremely quickly, and it, it, I, I, I didn't even do one fireball, I was just doing movements. So if I had just W keyed him down, that would have been a completely different fight. So this is another example of how you probably shouldn't use conduit. So, I was kind of styling, I was doing my thing, final circle, you know, there were seven people, multiple teams, it was solo squads, so I wanted to, I only had flight, well, I had shadow step, but I wanted to just have fun with flight this game, so I was just flying around, basically, collected skill points, and I wanted to kind of main it and see how it felt, I had shadow step swap just in case, so I was, you know, like, maining the sorcery, you know, coming from that, coming down for the fireballs, for the lightning strikes, just using the uh, the flight for some high ground, getting some zaps in, securing the kill. But um, basically the error that I made was I did this for way too long. So you see, you see it's working. Like I'm getting kills. But look, now there's four people. I didn't know, dog. So look at this. Look what I do, bro. I go right back up, but I should be W King with Shadow Step right now. I should have been on that bridge doing damage. Look how long I stay doing this. I'm up again. I flew up again, dog. I still don't realize that guy's half HP. Now I realize I need to kill him. It's too late, but like that's after I I went up again and I uh look when I come down I like take damage. Or one time they like they like chase me up. But yeah, basically, like, you just need to be more aware. Like, that's just one mistake that I made. Just flying too much. Like, know, know when it's time to fight, you know?
like that's good to like break armor and shit but you definitely have to swoop it down eventually with your primaries and clean up your kills at this point it was just too late this was a really good fight though Missed the fireball. That was vital. And I revealed my location. I didn't even have to. I ate all that damage because he's pyro. They don't see those. Like, that guy just passed right by me. But the stone, dude. I don't even think he saw me either. He was just getting his armor up. The fireball. Good, good defense. The offense. But he just had pyro on me. It's unfortunate. I watched this clip a bunch of times, I was like, how did I die? He sees me last minute, like, he has intent, he has intent, it's not like random. But, it's kind of dumb that he hit the wall and I died. Whatever though. I, I say all that to say, like, I should have uh, been W-King them a lot earlier. Like, I was doing all this flying in the air, I let the stone shaper reset, I let the- Like, I had 50 HP, I definitely could have came and done, like, two fireballs, you know? So, that's another- mistake that you can't make dude you have to like you have all the runic freedom in the world but you need to use it properly don't abuse it and just like fly around because you'll fuck yourself over and so now that you know the skills i just want to tell you a little bit what being a conduit in a fight is all about basically as a conduit you you don't have huge w key potential like pyro toxicologist you never do like, you can be good at a fire gauntlet, you can be good at a toxic gauntlet, but they just have an inherent advantage, obviously. So, really, what you're gonna wanna do a lot of the time is to break their shield with your lightning before you go in on anyone. And that's why you have all the runes, like, that's what the runes are for. You, you don't really wanna push in too hard, or you can decide to push in hard at the same time. You do, like, you do have the runic superiority over everyone, so what you decide to do with it is up to your discretion obviously so those are just things to consider there's two different sides to it you have the uh the lightning potential the mid-range potential but you also have the rune you can use the rune to buff what you're already good at or you can try to go hard aggro with it but either way you, you have a lot of possibilities with the class all right guys so that's basically the end of the video like to wrap things up you know conduit is a very diverse class where you have you know, you have your runic superiority, and you can use that to do a various amount of things. You can use that to get your W key potential up, or you could use it to kite and use lightning to its full potential. Personally, I like to stay mid-range, break shield, and then push on them. Uh, like, after I know that, like, I have more health than them. And then just use my runes to get out of situations that are sticky, and you know, I just love the diversity of the class. Like, I can, I can go invis i can fly just just everything that comes with it um and like one of the biggest things that i want to say with conduit is just experiment 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 because like there's so many like various combinations that you can do like you can make a new oh you can make wolf good with conduit dude it's a very unique class in that way and it's pretty excellent so yeah but with that being said i hope the video was informative i hope you learned something if you're a new player or if you're anyone anyone just trying to learn conduit and you have any questions leave them in the comments i'm gonna reply to every single one of them i'm gonna answer all your questions um yeah dude leave a like subscribe please <laughs> spent a long time making this i'd appreciate you um i'll make more guides and stuff and uh more videos in general down the line this is pretty fun uh, yeah, I don't want to make it long. Peace. Here's the clip of me abusing Shadow Step. It's literally impossible to see you. Yeah, and you're gone again. Nice. How many Shadow Steps I have left? Oh All of a sudden you appear. What the fuck, dude? This is bro. Jesus Christ. This is crazy. I have so many. <laughs> you're fighting him in the wrong terrain, though. You're giving him a turn. He keeps shadow stepping. I don't know where he's going. What the fuck, dude? <laughs>
This is broke. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that's broke. Nah, it's definitely balanced, trust me. <laughs>